Hey guys, Ben Pierce on the Roadster Tracker. Starman is currently at the closest point to Mars that it is going to be for some time. It's actually close enough you could reasonably say it's a close approach of the planet Mars. Now, the close approach actually happened a couple of days ago, but it's still pretty much the same distance. I did some calculations. It's only gone a couple hundred thousand kilometers away less than 100,000 miles away, I believe, from the closest approach. So it's only 1% further away. It's not going to make a significant difference. Now, those of you who have been around for a while have probably seen this Starman simulation that I built shortly after launching site Whereas Roadster. Most of this is pretty accurate. The size of the planets are accurate. The size of the sun's accurate. The location of the cameras is as accurate as I could get them to be. I tried to match the view that it would see. The models are the right size. They're not the best quality. This isn't really what I am used to doing, having this kind of modeling types of things. This is done with the Unity game engine. This is actually running in real time. You can see some of the celestial objects like Ceres. It's just this little tiny dot. But you can actually see the planet Mars. And let's just go ahead and face Mars. Now, the stars that you can see here are not real. They're just kind of a static background that I put on there. They're a lot bigger and brighter than they would be normally. But the little dots are actually accurate. And let's put this on rotate mode. The little tiny, tiny red dot there that you can barely see, that's what Mars would look like if the Starman cameras were active. So one of the questions I get asked all the time is, is why don't we actually still have live feed? Why didn't they put solar panels on the satellite and just have it continue to broadcast things? Well, first of all, it's not that easy. You'd have to put solar panels. You'd have to be able to point them in the right direction. You would have to extend the lifetime of all of the electronics on board. You'd have to have a longer range communication system that could point itself towards the planet Earth you'd have to go through some kind of planetary protection, and that would all just make it look less cool. And what would you get in the end? Well, you'd get this little tiny red dot when it passed by Mars two and a half years later, and they didn't even really know that it was going to do this. The goal was to just get Starman to go beyond the orbit Mars. You can see here this green line is the orbit of the Roadster. The red line is the orbit of Mars. The goal was just to get the green line to go past the red line. That's all they were trying to do. They launched at the wrong time of the year. They would have had to launch, I think, three months earlier, or later, excuse me, to be able to actually get to the planet Mars. But they didn't want to do that. They were just testing the capability, so it didn't really matter when they launched. The thing that was important is they had the capability to send this to Mars, and so they did. And they demonstrated they were able to do this, but the close approach really just didn't happen as we would like. They, this approach happened more than two and a half years after the launch. We have missions that launch this year that are going to get to Mars in eight to nine months tops. That's the amount of time that it should take to get to Mars, not two and a half years. It's gone around the sun over a time and a half since then you just don't need to do that if you aligned everything properly so mars and the roadster are kind of still going side by side you can see the distance here is incrementing and it's pretty slow roughly a kilometer per second so they're still roughly at the same distance and all you would get is this kind of tiny pixel you get to see the starman and the car slowly starting to fall apart which would be kind of interesting but for that you would have to add all of these complex systems that cost a lot of money you're talking probably a hundred million dollars realistically whereas this payload totally cost maybe two million and yeah that sounds like a lot of money but first of all elon musk he needed to clear out his roadster so that he had a room for the new 2020 roadster or whatever year it's actually going to be launched that uh, Tesla's building that's going to be much more powerful. I say that jokingly, 
but really this was just done to look cool and to kind of inspire people and it has really inspired people i've seen so many emails that i get all the time from people who were inspired by this launch i even saw somebody who they made a homework assignment they were talking about some of the coolest things that they thought and one of them was this roadster that was in space and they even mentioned me by name which i was quite honored to be honest but Starman's out there, he's kind of close to Mars right now. If you go outside and look at the planet Mars, you can actually see it very, very easily. It's the big red dot that is roughly opposite to the sun. And it's no coincidence that it's opposite to the sun. It's at the brightest point that it's going to be because Earth and Mars are the closest that they are going to be during their cycle. And this is actually one of the closer cycles. So they're pretty close to each other. You can see that here. You see Sun, Earth, Mars. And it's just a coincidence that the Tesla Roadster happens to be passing there close by when Mars is at opposition. But it's pretty cool overall. We don't have the capability to image this from any of the sensors that are at Mars. I've actually done the math and I've even talked to the high rise team which is the only team that has a camera that's even remotely capable. I used to work for that program too, by the way. And it doesn't have that capability, unfortunately. It'd be cool, but it just doesn't. Hopefully in 2035, we'll have humans that are actually on the surface of Mars, and they'll be able to take a look up and see it. They'll need a pretty powerful telescope to do it but hopefully we'll have some reasonably powerful telescopes there on mars in 2035 if the starship program goes according to plan it turns out we probably will thank you guys so much for joining me let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have a big thanks to my patreons who helped to fund this program this actually came as a result of the funding that i received from patreon i was able to build this this actually cost me a fair bit of money for the models to put together and it's thanks to the patrons that i was able to do that in the first place you guys are so awesome thank you for your continued interest in space exploration and for reaching out and for everything that you guys do if you want to talk to me i have a discord that you can come join anytime it's open to the public you guys can come hang out there talk about space stuff anytime you want I have a room in there that's specially for my Patreons that they can reach me at a little bit easier, a little bit more intimate setting. But hey, you guys are always welcome to join there. Thanks for everything. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.